All right, guys, we're going to roll into our next media availability. We have uh, Danica Patrick, driver of the number seven Hot Wheels GoDaddy.com Chevrolet in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Danica, you had a full day of practice yesterday. Why don't you just talk about that and your outlook for the weekend? Yeah, um, hello, everybody. Uh, sorry I'm a few minutes late. Um, yeah, it was good. It was good to have a full test day, I think, especially for me not having ever been here in a stock car before. It was nice to be able to... Uh, slowly get up to speed, I guess, on some of the other tracks that I haven't been to before. It's, um, well, all of them I haven't been to before in a stock car. It's, uh, you go out for first practice and everybody knows what they're doing and then there's me who doesn't even know how to get out of the garage area. So, <laughs> um, I get out there and it's, you know, everybody else is more comfortable getting up to speed. So those first 10 laps, I feel like I'm looking in my mirror more than anything, but I was able to just really build up and, uh, you know, it was an okay day. I think actually, you know, the quickest time of the day was set in the first run that I did, which I'm finding is more familiar in these cars. In an Indy car, it's, it's um, usually the end of the day. So, um, and uh, and as the rubber builds up, it, you know, it's good for an Indy car. But in these, sometimes that's not good either. So, first run was the quickest. Then, you know, as the, as the day heated up and heated up, it gets more slippery and. Um, we just didn't really keep up with the uh, with the car pushing, and um, so it, it it ended not quite as good. But um, I think it's that's okay. I mean, we learned from the day, and uh, and um, you know we're uh, we're better off than if we didn't have a full test day. That's for sure. Perfect. We'll now go to the media for questions. We have Wolfgang behind you, Dennis. Uh, Wolfgang Munzer from Germany Rennsport Press Agency. I would guess for your long-term motorsport career or future, you must make one day a decision, either go with open wheel or with the stockers. What is your time frame? When will you do your decision for that? Um, you know, that's, uh, that's the, the schedule that I'm running right now with IndyCar and Nationwide Series uh, will be the schedule for this year and next year, and then we'll decide from there on out what, uh, what is the, the right move for me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I've only had a handful or so of races in these cars, so um, what is it, four, five, six, this will be my seventh nationwide race, so, um, you know, it's it's not, not enough to really make any decisions, and, you know, I, I was, uh, I just don't have any answers for that yet. It's, um, it's so early on. All right, Bob Packers. Bob Packers, Singing Daily. Did you, um... Did you notice a lot of difference being in the new car versus the old car, and did you feel like you're starting all over again? I, uh, I'm probably not the best person to give you a new car um, perspectives. I honestly can't tell the difference. I've never been here in a stock car, and so maybe if I had been here in, in the old nationwide car, I would, I would be able to tell more, but um, I can't. And uh, all I know is that inside of the car... Uh, it's comfortable. There's plenty of space. You can see more, um, and uh, and and all the mechanics on the car say that it's nicer to work on them because there's more space inside too. So, um, <laughs> one of them even made a joke that he wants to get one and just turn it into a road car. He likes it so much. So, um, so uh, you know, I think there's been a lot of positive feedback from my perspective. And um, but as far as the actual feel on the racetrack, I'm not the I'm not a good one to help you out with that. I can't tell the difference. And, Funny, it reminds me of um, maybe my first year of IndyCar when there was some some changes that were made over the winter leading up to my first race, and um, you know I, I I didn't have any reference at all, so I went out there and drove it, and you know um, didn't didn't have anything else to go off of, so I was quote comfortable, I guess, and you know didn't didn't have any as much issues with the car as people that had driven the car previously because you know some of the rules some of the new rules had taken grip away from the car and and maybe some downforce and some other things so I didn't know any difference so ignorance is bliss on some level and uh, you know maybe that will play into the new car. We'll go Claire and then Nate and then come over here. Claire B. Lang, Sirius NASCAR Radio. It seemed to work out last time where you decided not to try to expect too much and to try to learn. So my question is, what's What's the mode of operandi as you go into this weekend? Is it the same? And then second of all, you lent your time to the fan session last night for autographs, and how did that play out, and what did you, what did you find out from the fans? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I think that my expectation levels for this race are, are going to be similar. Um, 
you know, I, I, I'm hoping for sort of top 15, 20 finishes, and I didn't quite get into the top 20 last time. So I think that, that expectation level is going to stay the same for this weekend, and we'll see what we can do. Um, I, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully we can, we can get up there with, uh, with the full test day that we had and, you know, me kind of having the time to run down low, run in the middle, run up high. I, I didn't see anybody else running up high, but at the end of the day yesterday, I just kind of, you know, was, you know, the, the, the team told me just go up there and get a feel for it. So, you know, maybe that will pay off in the race. Um, and, uh, as far as the fans go, I was actually pleased to see so many fans out. It was just a it was just a Thursday test day, and um, there was lots of them out there, very excited. And um, you know that's one of the great things about about uh, NASCAR is how passionate the fans are, and and they definitely are. So um, you know it was nice to be a part of something like that. Every weekend in IndyCar we have autograph sessions. They they definitely do a lot of autograph sessions, but I haven't done one before in NASCAR, so it was uh, nice to be able to get to get to talk to the fans a little bit. Nate. Uh, Nate Ryan, USA Day. Danica, you had a rough weekend at, at Mid-Ohio. I assume maybe you were looking forward to this, and I'm wondering if it, it, is that a silver lining that even though the schedule is so busy that you're always jumping into a new car that maybe you can put the, the tough weekends behind you more quickly? Yeah. I mean, if you go off the theory you're only as good as your last race, it's good to keep out there if you don't have a good weekend um, because you have something something else going on. And, you know, the IndyCar season has been a disappointing one. As I've said before, I can't remember where. I can't remember if it was here or in an IndyCar race. It was probably an IndyCar race. I've had probably my best road course and oval race of my seat of my career, but you know it comes amongst a bunch of very mediocre races. So um, Mid Ohio was one of them. Um, I think as a team, um, we have really struggled on the road courses this year. Uh, granted, the the competition is extremely close. You know, in the old days, uh, you know, one second covering 25 cars would seem not even it would seem unlikely, but it's the case these days. So you know, the fact that we're we're lacking something is is really obvious now and um so you know it's good to get out here and um forget about last weekend but we do you know it is important too to think about last weekend and learn for for next weekend in sonoma um it will be the last road course of our of our season and perhaps it's been uh, even more difficult that the indycar season has been chunked up with four road course four oval five road course four ovals so um, this stretch has been, um, you know, painful at times. So, um, but there is an end in sight, and we are learning from from what we're doing, and um, we hopefully will have uh, better 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 preparation for next weekend at Sonoma. And if not, I'm sure we'll learn from that too. Go ahead, Bob Duff from uh, the Windsor Star. Uh, just wondering, can you glean anything beneficial from talking to other drivers who've made the switch from open wheel to stock cars, or is it simply just a matter of the seat time and gaining the experience? Yeah, it's, um, well, as I've said plenty of times, the drivers have been really generous with their, with their time and information. Um, there is definitely a certain amount that you need to learn on your own, no matter what people say, unless you feel it for yourself, experience it, um, learn from a mistake. Sometimes it doesn't really hit home and sink in, or sometimes you don't even understand what they're saying. So uh, a lot of things you do have to learn, but there are some things that you can keep in mind, and perhaps I can recognize a situation quicker having heard from it from uh, other drivers. So um, yeah, there's definitely some that you can learn from it, but but there is definitely a level that you have to learn for yourself too.